episode of Question Time, we're going to be talking about domestic violence because it is Domestic Violence Awareness Week. So if it's a bit difficult for you to hear right now, then go and watch the Question Time where I count my teeth. That's a fun one. Go and watch that. She gets it wrong. <sighs> I'm pretty sure I have 46, but okay. Thanks to those who have stuck around uh, to hear about this. This is a this is a bit more of a serious one, but. Um, Really good stuff to hear about, um, and yeah, I'm excited to talk about it a bit. So we've got, if I keep looking down, it's because we've got some information on a screen below you. Just there. Um, so there's like loads of different types of domestic violence. It's not just if a big strong man is hitting a shy woman. Like there's so much other stuff, it doesn't even have to be physical. There's a lot of like emotional violence that can happen and other things like that. Yeah, we just really want to stress the point that it, it can be anyone within a family, uh, well, or, or a household. It can be anyone, yeah, it can anyone, be any, doesn't anyone to, to anyone. It can be at home. Yeah, it can be adult, adult to a child, it could be brother to brother, sister to sister, ch child to adult even. Um, it can be anyway. So. Mm. so the point of this week is just to spread awareness, I think, um, for like the different kinds of violence that there is. Mm. Um, and maybe it might encourage people that are suffering to be like, hey, that's not right actually, that's not normal. Yeah, and we're going to talk a little bit about the sort of things that you can do to take those steps or to encourage a friend who you think might be at risk. So like we said, there's different types of abuse, it's not all physical, so some examples of emotional abuse can include things like monitoring your social media, who you're talking to, who your friends are, things like criticising what you wear if you're feeling comfortable in something and somebody being like, mm, that doesn't look good on you, things like accusing you of flirting or having an affair. Um, or cheating on someone is also a sign that could be emotional abuse. And denying and downplaying your experience as well and saying that what you're experiencing is not right is also a type of emotional abuse as well. Another, another non-physical type of abuse, abuse is in threats and intimidation. So this, um, this can be in a threat to hurt or kill you or even vice versa, a threat to hurt themselves on account of something that you've done. It can also be a, a type of physical intimidation or it can be stalk stalkerish type of thing, so reading your texts or emails and harassing you in that sort of way. If your partner touches you in a way that, that you don't want to be touched, that could be um, an example of sexual abuse. Also things like pressuring you to having unsafe sex, that can be sexual abuse as well. The bottom line is that if your partner has sex with you and you don't want to have sex, that is rape. And then there's physical forms of abuse, so any type of contact that is aggressive, um, a slap, a hit, a punch. Um, Things like biting as well, throwing stuff. Yeah, anything like that is physical abuse. Um, so on this website that we're reading from, it says the first step in escaping an abusive situation is realising that you're not alone and that it's not your fault. Yeah. People that are in abusive situations are often led to believe that it's like their fault that they're being abused, that it's their fault that they're, that the partner or whoever's involved is shouting all the time, that it's their fault that they've annoyed the other person, it's never your fault and if it does feel wrong, then it's wrong. So there are different websites that you can go to and different sources of information that will help you. Something really useful is making a safety plan um, and you can find that out uh, with a quick Google. Maybe even talk to one of your mentors if you have a mentor or one or of Or even just your friends. Like yeah. I think it's really useful if you go to somebody that you trust. It can be a teacher, it can be a friend, it can be a neighbour, it could be your parents. It could be a youth worker. It could be a youth worker. Maybe not a dinosaur because Diffie hasn't got any fingers to send any emails so... Anyway! Um, there's lots of different places and help for people that are struggling with domestic abuse stuff So we'll link some in the, in the description of this video so you guys can quickly go and find it or just do a quick Google And there's lots of stuff that you can choose from and you can check out this website the website as well This is the NHS um, UK website. It's um, very useful. Very and it's very easy to read. It's got bullet points, which I like So the next section that we're going to talk about is helping a friend if they're being abused um, so if you're worried about a friend that's being abused, let them know that something is wrong. They might not be ready to talk, but try and find quiet times when they can talk if they choose to. I think just letting somebody know that you're there and sort of encouraging them to speak about something is really important. Yeah, and it's important in those moments to say that you have seen something that you're not sure about and that you've noticed it. Um, because it, it, it could be that nothing is the problem, it could be that there is something that is a problem, but it's better to be safe um, and to say your concern than to not at all. Mm -hmm. If someone or a friend of yours says that they are experiencing uh, a, abuse at home, some really good pointers are to listen and take care not to blame them for anything that's happened to them, uh, acknowledge the strength it took for them to say what's happened and to even experience what they're experiencing. Give them the time to talk, but do not push them to talk either. And 
and acknowledge the reality of the situation that they're in. It's important to remind them that nobody deserves to be threatened or beaten or abused in any way and remind them again it's not their fault that they are experiencing this abuse. They might not be ready to leave the relationship that they're in or leave the family that they're staying with and, and that's okay, it's a decision that they need to make. Um, also remember in this situation that it's it's not up to you, it's not your responsibility. Like we said, there's organisations that you can go to, you can look into, you can make suggestions. So a point on this page is be ready to provide information about organisations that offer help for people experiencing domestic abuse. So if you've got that information, you can pass it on, you can encourage your friends to contact these places. I know like Isaac doesn't like speaking on the phone. If you've got a friend that doesn't like speaking on the phone, you can encourage them. You can be there with them. You can ask to make the initial phone call next to them with them so they feel supported. And finally, if they have suffered physical harm and need medical help, um, do offer to go with them to a hospital or a GP um, and help them report uh, assault to the police um, if they feel ready to choose to make that decision. If anyone's been sexually assaulted, know that you can get confidential help, treatment and support at a sexual assault referral centre. Um, so you can find out more about that on the NHS website and there's lots of information there. Um, so lockdown obviously is a really important thing and we can't just be hanging around with our friends in the park and stuff, but lockdown does not apply to you if you need to leave your home to get away from a domestic violence situation. Mm -hmm. The police will understand if you go and you say, I can't stay in that house because it's dangerous for me. And you know, if you come to a youth work or your mentor or a teacher or a neighbour, whoever, they will understand if you're in that situation that you do need to leave. Uh, and will help you get to a safe place as best as possible. There's also um, things that I've seen around is like because obviously we're doing a lot of online stuff and if you guys are on like doing online learning and stuff like that, there's like a, a signal that you can do. I think you tuck your thumb in. Mm -hmm to your hand and then I think I've seen and where you close, close your fist yeah, as well. Fist. So this right. is sort of like a little signal if you can't speak because obviously if we're all in the same house, we're at home all the time, everyone's at home all the time, if the issue is coming from your house then it might be difficult to say, I need help, I'm experiencing domestic, domestic violence. So yeah, that's another one that I hope is recognized by teachers and whoever you're communicating with on camera. Thanks for watching this Thanks video watching, guys. guys. It's a little bit heavy but I think it's some really important stuff and I'd encourage you to go and check out this NHS website. Yeah it's just, really Like good. I said it's really simple to read, it's clear, it's direct and it's not too scary. It's just facts. This week is all about spreading awareness for domestic violence so chat to your friends about it, have a little conversation yeah. about what it is and just spread awareness guys. And if you want to talk to us about any of the things that have come up in this video, follow us on Instagram and you can send us a message there. Make sure you guys have got your notifications on so you can see the video that's coming out on Wednesday. It's a collaboration with Courtney. Get ready for it. Very exciting. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye!